Which Side Podcast is a proud member of the Which Side Media Collective. So we have episode 54. Yeah, this week we have Jeff Worth on um, from Burning Hearts Media and the infamous Because We Must. Yeah, it was super awesome talking to him. Yeah, he was a really sweet guy. Yeah, yeah, really funny. Funny as fuck. Word. Yep, yep, yep. Plus, he has some really exciting news you guys got to stick around and listen to. Yeah, uh, I'm super excited for him. Oh, my God. I'm so super jealous. So Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really happy for him. No, totally super happy. I can't wait to see uh, what comes up. But, totally. So, uh, so stick around and listen to the whole thing and you hear all about it. Um, events. Um, if you want to check out any events, you can go to wishsidepodcast.com and click on events. If you don't see your city listed there, let us know. And we will find one for you. Or try. Or we'll make one up and be like, hey. Hey, there's a Scrabble night. Yeah, like if you're, your if you're like in Wyoming, I'll find some shit for you to do in Wyoming. Sure, why not? I mean, it might be fake, but <laughs> like, there'll be a calendar there for you. Graffiti at... <laughs> Go graffiti at this building at 6 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> All right. Um, you can still... Help us out. Um, if you're ever going to buy anything on Amazon.com, go to whichsidepodcast.com first and click on our Amazon link. We get a kickback. So that's less money for Amazon and more, more money, money for us. us. And it doesn't, doesn't cost you a anything. goddamn dime. Yeah. yeah so. Fuck Amazon. They don't need the money. We yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Or you can just donate to us. Yeah, either way. But if you're already going to buy the shit, because, yeah. I mean, who doesn't? Yeah. Uh, you know, use our link. Yeah. yeah. Hey, guys. Seriously. Enjoy this. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Which side? Which side are you on? 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 Hello. Hello. Hey. hey. How's it going? Doing good. Hi, I'm, I'm, I'm Jeremy. Hello, Jeremy. I'm Jeff. Nice to meet you, Jeff. Nice to meet you as well. So uh, I just want to apologize up front. I've uh, had a fever approaching 105 all fucking week. And oh, shit. my mind is really fucking cloudy still. So I'm a little slow at everything. <laughs> no problem. So... But we'll. 105, that's pretty intense, right? I, it always happens with me. Like, whenever I get a fever, it always approaches that. Like, since I was a kid. Like, this whole idea of being vegan for like 20 years and you don't get this shit, it's just fucking not true. Or I'm doing <laughs> something wrong. You're doing something wrong. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. I well, think, how often do you get sick like this? Uh, like once every two years or so, maybe three years. Uh, okay. I mean, that, that's not too bad then. No, no, it's not like crazy so yeah yeah nor normally when i get sick it's like a cold and that's kind of it i think it's like yeah. um me actually getting the flu since you know we don't get flu shots so yeah. like but it doesn't last very long because i'm vegan and tough as shit so fuck the flu <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, i've been doing quite a bit of traveling so i'm getting over a, a cold right now oh that sucks where you've been traveling to um, a couple of days ago, I just got back from Toronto, Canada. Awesome. It was, it was cold as fuck. You know, I've never been to that side of Canada. Yeah, that was my first time as well. Normally, I've, I've just been to BC just because that's, that's really close to where I'm located now in Portland. Uh -huh. I've been denied entry into Vancouver before. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've never been denied but i've always had trouble coming back which is funny really yeah the the last time um the last time i came back from bc it was quite a hassle like they they pretty much i mean they tackled me and put me in handcuffs with like you know like 15 20 guns pointed at me sort of thing holy fuck that's way worse than me i've been hassled but <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, it was no fun. It was pretty gnarly. Oh man, I'm what sorry. what was the cause of all that? Um, just 
being an activist. Yeah. 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 Of course, of course they couldn't tell me, but you, yeah, they you, they said that that um I probably had the same name as some bad apple in the real world and that this would get fixed up in no in no time. <laughs> <laughs> wow when when we were denied entry and they turned us around to go back um they didn't want to let us back in they were trying to tell us <laughs> that our ids weren't valid uh proof of citizenship it's weird ridiculous. <laughs> yeah it was yeah. fucked up i know that jeremy beckham got stuck in between did he get stuck in between too? he did we got stuck yeah, in like... between because of bolt cutters <laughs> oh shit we totally just did not realize there was bolt cutters in the trunk Oh that, my God. that just looks bad. Yeah. Well, plus, like, there was, like, uh, other dumb shit, you know, like, you have, like, any activist does, like, pamphlets and, yeah, you know, yeah like, you know. <laughs> yeah, that was a not smart choice. Yeah. N- normally for border crossings, my car is clean as it ever has been. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I just, like, clean it out of all anything that could be activist oriented at all. Yeah, I've learned my lesson. <laughs> I don't even... I don't know if they'd let me over. You don't have your passport back yet. No, I don't. I still have to file legal paperwork to get that back. Damn. Yeah. Wait, like, they still have it from, like, a house raid? Um, From my... Just the... When I got the... On parole, they took it. Fuck, man. Yeah. They don't give that back easily because it's a well. They get they they do give it back easily. All I have to do is file the legal paperwork because I'm off parole now. Yeah. But it's it's not like yeah. hey, you're off parole. Here's your passport. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here you go. Here's leave the country now. <laughs> here's here's two hundred dollars. Please pass go. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> so, what new projects are you working on? Is this, are we being recorded right now? Fuck yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure if this was like a pre-talk before like the talk. Dude, we just, we just go into it. We're yeah. totally lax. Either way. Uh, that, that's, that's awesome. Um, yeah, so the past, past year and a half or so, I've been focusing on video work for the most part. I, I was sort of getting... I was sort of getting bored with the Because We Must project. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I love it, and I think it's an awesome, useful resource, but I was just... I It felt like I... I don't know. I couldn't go any further with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and the past, like, five years, I've always... Um, I've always had a lot of fun doing video work for, you know small local AR groups, you know, making campaign videos or promo videos for events, that sort of thing. Um, So I've just been slowly working myself up to just doing that full time. Mm -hmm. And um, probably around a year ago, I, I was getting enough work where I was able to actually like use video or do video as my main job, which I've been wanting to do for a long time. So that's been, that's definitely been my, um, my focus and I, I love it. Well, that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So, uh, b- before we started, Jordan showed me a photo with you and a uh, Ted Nugent. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so there's, there's yeah. some explanation in that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there is. Okay. So <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Yeah. It's funny. Like people ask me like, like how how Ted's doing, or like how Uncle Ted's doing, <laughs> like like I'm on like a you know best friend I have basis. some sort of like yeah some sort of friendship with them where I could just text them and see what's up today or something. You are closer to him than I am. Yeah, I, I know, I know. Okay, um, <laughs> so do you know do you know Hannah Shaw? No, no, maybe okay, um. She's from North Carolina, but she currently lives in D.C. She's she's like a vegan, straight edge, like activist. Um, she's an AR activist, but she also does all sorts of other cool stuff. So Hannah is the daughter of the singer and guitarist of the rock band Sticks. Okay. 
and Styx founded this nonprofit called Rock to the Rescue. And Hannah is the director of the nonprofit. Mm-hmm. And um, so basically, Styx signs a guitar at every show, and they raffle the guitar off. And Hannah picks local charities that they donate to every show. So it's it's super cool. Like, yeah. um, you know, they could raise anywhere between like, you know, like two to five grand a show, um, just for like a small local charity, which. You know, a lot of charities. That's that's big that's like, money to them. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. They, they rotate the charities and everything. Yeah, yeah. Like depending on um, on where the show is, they find a local shelter or a local charity for every every show. Yeah. So um, Sticks and Ted Nugent have been friends for a long time. Like before Sticks, um, Hannah's dad Tommy was in a band with Ted Nugent. Um, so they've always toured together and they've always been friends and um hannah contacted me and she's like hey we want to fly you out to pennsylvania to make a rock to the rescue promo video so i was like hell yeah that sounds awesome so um they flew me out and it was for uh the last show of a sticks tour and sticks was on tour with ted nugent and ario speedwagon okay and um i was pretty cool yeah yeah it was awesome. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, she wanted to get me. Um, I had to interview every, for the most part, every band and talk about Rock to the Rescue because all three bands have a history with Rock to the Rescue. Mm-hmm. And um, the main sound bites that I wanted from um, Ted Nugent were um, how Rock to the Rescue helps out helps out families in need for the most part. Um, I heard that he was going to say a lot of other junk, but that was the only part that I needed to have in the video. Um, which is funny because in the video, Sticks is donating to a wildlife rescue. Oh, and wow. I also I also have Ted Nugent like a minute and a half or two minutes before the wildlife footage talking about how Rock to the Rescue helps out Americans. Um, <laughs> Americans <laughs> helping Americans. Doesn't Ted Nugent <laughs> also do canned hunts? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Ted, Ted, Nugent, <laughs> is, Ted Nugent is only a piece of work. Um, it was interesting because as I was editing the video together, Hannah wanted to be sure that I wasn't making it sound like Ted Nugent supports the wildlife rescues because we didn't want to have any legal trouble with his people at all. So I had to have that sort of stuff separate for the most part. Yeah. So I I didn't even really interview him. Like Ted Nugent doesn't really get interviewed. He always has something to say at, you know, any time. So I pretty much um, walked into his trailer and turn it on the camera, and he started talking towards my camera. And talking, I, I more so like mean yelling because he's really loud. <laughs> so he's like talking about like Americans helping out Americans and how important it is to like be there for each other. And he talked about like nine eleven and stuff, but I, none of that stuff made it in the video. Oh man! Oh, that's insane. Can you hold on one second? I'm getting a huge echo. I want to see if I can fix it. Oh shit! Sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I saw a picture of your guys' setup. It looks pretty nice. Thank you. It it's pretty ghetto fied. Yeah. Yeah. We got like uh insulation on the walls. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty fun. I mean, but you each have your own like podcast mic, right? Yeah. Yeah, we have our own uh we use the Samsung uh seal one use. Uh uh-huh. and then we made our own pop filters for them. Oh sweet. Um yeah, so I mean, it's a it's a decent little setup. It was mainly um, donations that got us the mics. So yeah, it's totally. Nice. Oh wow, that's awesome. Yeah the the hard thing using USB though is that um, the clocking on them every once in a while gets thrown off, and so the latency gets increased. Uh, uh, so uh, yeah, yeah. But um, so I'm not now complaining. That, now that I know we're recording, do you want to hear the story of the um, my border crossing? Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Okay, so. Um, me and a few friends went up to BC for a couple of weeks 
like we wanted to go hiking on Vancouver Island and whatnot. So we um we flew no, we didn't fly. We um we drove from um Seattle to Victoria on Vancouver Island. So we we had to take the ferry there. Mm-hmm. And the the ferry customs uh was super, super chill. Um like once we got to Canada, she pretty much looked at our passports and looked at us and gave them back. Like she didn't scan them or, you know, type in our names or anything. And I was like, oh wow, that was super chill. I hope coming back is like that. <laughs> so we, we had an awesome time in Canada, you know, saw a lot of cool animals and wildlife and whatnot. Um and we came home on Boxing Day, which for the US most people don't know what Boxing Day is, but the the day after Christmas is like a huge Huge thing in Canada, and we came down through I five, um, so from Vancouver to Seattle, pretty much. And it was Boxing Day, so there were a million cars, and it was super backed up, and it was really busy. And once we got to the border booth, I handed over four passports for the four people in my car, and they scanned through three of the passports pretty quickly. And they were studying one of them for a bit. And then he looks at me and he's like, hey, can you can you like turn off your car and hand me the keys? And I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. Um, so I turned off the car, handed this dude the keys. And um, then he exited the booth and ran back into the building. And like, when I say ran, he, he, it was like, it was like a jog. Like, it wasn't like a him sprinting, you know, running for his life sort of thing. But um. So he was he hustling. Thought, yeah, he was he was hustling, and I thought that was pretty weird. So I started to empty my pockets, um, just because I knew I was probably gonna be handcuffed or something. So I just wanted to make everything easier. So I was like yeah. taking out my wallet and my phone and like any other sort of you know junk I had in my pockets. And then um, like two to three minutes later, like fifteen to twenty guys come outside, and they're all pointing guns like in my direction, and they're yelling like stick your hands like stick your hands out of the car you know like that sort of thing hands up and i thought they were yelling at the minivan next to me for some reason so (laughs) my like head is is hanging out the window and i'm like holy shit this is awesome (laughs) i thought i was witnessing witnessing, like some sort of drug bust or something (laughs) because i was like there's no way like these 20 guys with guns are talking to me like there's no way so i was like you know, hanging out the window going, oh, my God. Like, you know, I wish I had popcorn to sit there and watch. Um, <laughs> and then I saw that all of them were looking at me. Like, all of them were making eye contact with me. So I was like, oh, fuck. This is me. So they told me to put my hands out the window. But I heard them tell me to put my hands on the windshield. And I thought that was a little bizarre because the windshield has a weird incline. And it doesn't really work like that. So I had my hands on the windshield. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, this is weird. But okay, what what next? And then they're like, no, out the window. You know, out the fucking window. So I was like, oh, okay. That makes, that makes a lot more sense. So <laughs> I put my hands out the window. And they told me to open up my car door from the outside. But my seatbelt was still on. So that doesn't work. So I yelled at them. I was like, my seatbelt's on. Can I take my seatbelt off? And they're like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's funny. So, so I took off my seatbelts um, and then opened up my car door from the outside. And they instructed me to walk backwards with my hands on my head. And I'm walking backwards. And then this dude runs up from behind me and tackles me. And I thought that was, you know, a l- little strange for, yeah. for um, you know, me not being arrested or anything yet. Um, and um yeah so i'm ha- have i'm being escorted into the customs building by seven seven border agents and so it's boxing day so the border building is filled with you know people they told to pull into secondary um which i mean i was the only white person in that building besides the guards everyone else was someone of color um so i mean that that definitely shows you something um, yeah yeah so the first cell they put me into does not have a urinal in it, and I had to pee really bad. 
So I was like right off the bat when they took off my handcuffs, I told them that I had to go pee really bad. And they're like, you know, you should have thought about that before you came to the border sort of thing. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So um, I was like, okay. Like, so I started to unzip my pants and take, like, I was unzipping my pants and pretending you know, to motion to take my pants off. Uh-huh. And they're like, dude, okay, okay, hold up, hold up. <laughs> so, um, so I like, un- I zipped my pants back up and they re handcuffed me and then they brought me to a different cell that had a bathroom. So, um, I did my business and then I'm just waiting there and I hear these two guards like outside of the door say, well, 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 look who finally decides to show up today. So in my, I heard that in my head, I was like, what the fuck? Like they've been waiting for me for like multiple days. Like what the hell is happening? <laughs> um, turns out they weren't even talking about me. They were talking about their coworker. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was just like being paranoid about nothing. Um, yeah, so this, like, nice cop guy comes in, and he was like, hey, like, how's it going? And I was like, well, I'm I'm here, so not too awesome. And um, he's like, so are you in any sort of legal trouble? And I was like, I don't know, am I? Um, and then he's like, do you have any warrants in any states or countries? And I said, nope, not that I can recall. Um, and he's like, okay, okay, so here's what's going on. We probably just have you mixed up with some bad apple out there, and this should get this should get mixed or um, fixed up in no time, and you'll be on your way. And in my head, I was like, "No, this probably isn't. This probably isn't too much of a mistake. You probably have the right." <laughs> um, so I waited in that cell for like another hour, and then they let me go in the waiting room and hang with my friends who were all just sitting waiting. So I went and chilled with them for a bit, and they called me up to the desk and asked me what I was doing in Canada and luckily I had I went to um a show in Canada so I I told them that I went to an AFI Antiguan and Sarah show and they googled it and saw that that was a thing um and luckily like I had you know I it's it's always good to to give them something that actually happened mm-hmm. um because they they need something to go with you know they don't like knowing that you were just in Canada for 2 weeks without any, you know, um, concrete places to place you at. Uh, so once they saw that that was a show, they tried to bro down about AFI, and I was like, whatever, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whatever, work. I was not talking to you about this shit. Um, so they let us go, and the only thing I was bummed about, about the whole experience, is by the time we got to Seattle, Mighty Donuts was already closed. Oh, <laughs> and that was like the, that was the number one thing that we wanted to do. Um, yeah, so that was the last time I crossed through BC. God, um, yeah, it, it's a good story, but it's it was pretty nerve wracking. Yeah, that's that's just terrible. We we got yelled at for about forty five minutes. We went to Canada. Why we while we started the war in Afghanistan. So oh, we, shit. we crossed, we weren't at war. We came back, we were at war. Whoa. And we didn't bring passports or anything. It was fucking Canada at the time. Like, no one worried about that shit, you know, but yeah. 10, 11 years ago. And so yeah. they were just total dicks, you know. Like, why don't you have your passports? Like, do we need your passports? Like, we're at fucking war. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I... yeah, it was insane. But nothing like you, Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's terrible. Yeah, it's pretty weird. And... I just crossed through the border again a few days ago from Toronto into Buffalo. And we got, they told us to go into secondary. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was me and my partner, Jenny, who lives in Toronto. And we got pulled into secondary mostly because of her. They didn't ask me any questions. They weren't concerned with me at all, which I was, I was pretty surprised about. Um, yeah, the only questions they had for me were like, how long have you been in Canada, sort of thing. But um, yeah, Jenny is an activist in Toronto, and she's also a producer of the vivisection film Maximum Maximum Tolerated Dose. Uh-huh. Yeah. So normally when she crosses the border, they like to stop her and ask about that. <laughs> really? Like, what do they ask her about? Um, Like, what her role in the film was, pretty much. like. They probably want to know if she was 
you know, if she traveled elsewhere to get, you know, footage for the movie. Like, if you've seen the the film, it has a lot of gnarly footage, mm-hmm. um, a gnarly gnarly undercover footage, and I think they're they're trying to get, you know, names and faces for people who filmed that maybe. Um, but she just tells them that she's like a producer. Like she just tries to play it off. Like she doesn't have, like she didn't have much of a role in the film, and they normally let her go. <laughs> like a few days ago when they stopped us, um, the lady said that she's not sure why her name is flagged, but it is. Um, and she even told Jenny to like complain, complain to the, the U.S. <laughs> government to to try to get that cleared. <laughs> Was that Canada side or? United States. Um, no, that was, that was the United States side. So the U.S. border <laughs> agents, like, you should complain about this shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like even the border agents don't understand what's going on. Wow. I yeah, wonder, like, do they give them questions that they're supposed to ask them when they're flagged? I don't know. I mean, it seems like they probably would, but a lot of the questions are just really stupid questions. Yeah. I don't so, know. Like, maybe it it depends on what like what their flag level is or something like if someone's super sketchy is crossing they're probably not going to question them mm-hmm. you know like if if some like you know high political activists crossed i bet they wouldn't bother them with stupid questions like you know say like you know julian assange if he came to the u.s or something they wouldn't <laughs> go so like what brings you to the U.S.? <laughs> like, going into your protests or something? I mean, they wouldn't. They wouldn't bother with that shit. I'm sure they, they would just know who the person is and know that they're not supposed to let them in or something. Yeah, yeah. So what's what's your like uh, craziest fucked up story with with police besides the border agent? Oh man. <laughs> uh, okay. Well. I wish I had a good story with my my parents' house getting raided by the FBI, but I mean that that story is pretty pretty normal for an FBI house raid. Um, so I could tell you a, a funny story of um, how a group of us got vegan pizza with cops before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sound, that sounds great. <laughs> okay, so um, we were doing vivisection demos in Northern California for um you know, researchers that were experimenting on, on animals in uh, a couple universities up there. And we had, like, a day of demos where we were going to, like, you know, 10 researchers' houses, so it's a pretty full day. Mm-hmm. And there were, like, three cars of us, you know, just going around, driving, yelling at people and whatnot. And there are also a team of cops, like, multiple cars following us the whole time and filming us the whole time. and um once we were done for the day we um we tried to lose the cops because we wanted to go eat pizza in peace and not have any cops following us so we tried to lose them like we were like we took them down this long one-way street and we parked and then we ran the opposite way of the street (laughs) Um, so we like took off running and they flipped shit like they put it in reverse but then this car turned in so they couldn't do anything (laughs) <laughs> um, and they finally caught up with us they saw us walking on a sidewalk and um i walked up to them and i said hey yeah we're um we're just taking a little break this is only half time we still have like you know <clears throat> like six more houses to go to or something and i said yeah we're going to get some vegan pizza like if you guys wanted to come and join us like that that would be awesome <laughs> you know just thinking that they would go like no way so um they're like, oh, okay, yeah, that sounds great. So they parked their car, and then we ordered, and we sat down, and then we saw them walk in, and <laughs> they walked in, and they, like, asked us what pizza to get, and all of us are just looking at each other, like, holy fuck, is this <laughs> happening? <laughs> like, what the hell is going on? So I, I told them to get, like, the vegan Hawaiian pizza, and he was like, oh, okay, so it's... It's not real ham, it's vegan ham, right? And I was like, yeah, of course, like, everything's vegan. And he was like, is the, is the pineapple vegan? Is it like real pineapple? Or <laughs> I, was like, I was like, yeah, it's, it's vegan pineapple, bro. Um, so the cops order vegan pizza and sit down at a table across from us. 
So like all of us are just facing these cops and the cops are facing us. And it just became really awkward. Oh man. <laughs> like like our our normal conversation stopped and we just didn't know what to talk about because we didn't <laughs> we didn't want the cops listening to like, you know, our, our bullshit gossip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah, and we finished our pizza and we're like, Okay, see ya and left and we we're just like, Oh my god, like what's happening? And the cops followed us out and um, followed us for a little bit, but saw that we weren't going near any researcher houses. So they finally stopped following us. Yeah. So that was the <laughs> were first. Were they just uh, like normal beat time. cops? Um, yeah, that they were, wait, they, they may have been university cops, but I mean, you see university cops are pretty much cops. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. it, they, they still have, they still can do everything cops can do. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they might they may have been like Berkeley or, or Oakland cops, but I kinda remember them being university cops. You know, I, I'd be pissed if I was a cop and I show up to work one day, my boss is like, You gotta go follow these activists that are just, you know, <laughs> using their First Amendment right to protest. I know. You're like, fuck. <laughs> oh, I, I think it's funny that they have like meetings before any protest happens. It's like, all right, so this is what's going down. They're gonna be standing yeah. outside a building. You have to yeah. be there and watch them. They're oh, okay. Um, so earlier that day, during one of the demos, so there's a cop, you know, filming us at every every house we go to, mm-hmm. and I I used to have this normal this normal speech that I would yell on the bullhorn, talking about like how how we are above ground activists and like we are the ones that they want to be dealing with and like they they should consider themselves lucky to be dealing with us. But um, I totally messed up at this one house, and I started saying, and, like, the cop filming me is, like, you know, five, six feet in front of me, and I yelled, we are the underground activists. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I paused, and, like, the cop looked at me and kind of, like, tilted his head. Like, he was like, huh? And then I started laughing, and I was like, psych. <laughs> 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 I just didn't know what to say, so I was like, "God damn!" And then after that demo, like my friends were like, "So what? What happened there?" <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, I, I totally messed up." But I think funny. I've done the sum with ADL and mixing ALF on accident because <laughs> oh I'm thinking it, like something in my head, and I'm like, "Fuck!" So yeah. usually during like a media interview, I'd go like, "Fuck shit, damn." <laughs> And then they can't use the material. Yeah, it's just so they can't use that whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, there's um that reminds me, there was this this news clip recently. Well not news clip. It wouldn't have been a news clip, but it didn't get used. During um I think it was during grand jury stuff in Seattle. Uh-huh. Um there was this like police press conference where a whole bunch of media wanted to get, you know, sound bites from a few cops but there were a couple activists in the background right behind the cops that were just cursing the entire time (laughs) like just like yelling and like you know talking shit on the cops the whole time just so none of the footage none of the cop media footage can get used and it it actually worked like they stood there for like 20-25 minutes the whole time like without you know like barely breathing just so they could uh keep yelling without giving the cops any any breathing time at all. It was pretty cool. That's awesome. That's way cool. Yeah. yeah it was pretty interesting tactic. I, I never really thought about that before. Like, just yeah. curse and make the footage unusable for the most part. And the the cops couldn't do anything about the cursing? I I feel that, no. that they would, like, try to arrest them or something for yeah. vulgarity. No, they, they didn't do anything. You can arrest I mean, people mostly... for vulgarity? Yeah, I I've heard of it happening. I've heard of it as like uh, almost uh, assault, like I mean, a if, verbal if assault. They, if they really wanted to, probably, but I doubt that would fly in a major city. Like, yeah. Especially since there were so many. Um, especially since there were so many cameras there. Yeah, they wouldn't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, that that would be bad for them. That's awesome. That's an awesome tactic. I feel that here that it could happen. <laughs> Sucks. 
Possibly. I feel like, oh, he was saying the F word, though. We need to put him in jail for sure. Ay, ay. Yeah. <laughs> you know it's true, Jeremy. That's why I'm laughing. <laughs> I haven't been to Salt Lake in quite a while. The last time I was there, it was like a vegan this tour or something. I think we were touring with subhumans or something like that. Oh, awesome. Um, did you go to any uh, local restaurant? Uh, the only restaurant we went to was a Thai place that was right across the street from the venue. Um, I totally can't remember the venue name and... Of course, I don't know what the Thai place was called, but I know that it was recommended by a couple of friends that live there. Like, I asked okay. them where I could eat around there, and like, oh, go to blah, blah, blah. It was blah. probably Caf, or, uh... ah, I can't think of it. It was next to City Cake. What was that one called? Oh, shit. <laughs> Brain freeze. I never went there. I haven't, I, I haven't been there since, I mean, City Cakes has been a thing for a while now, right? Yeah, and they've actually moved location. They've, they bought out like an old uh like catering company. Yeah, and oh, so wow. now they have this huge operation and they're That's doing awesome. whole foods and stuff. Yeah, they're doing amazing. I'm really, really proud to have that in our city. Yeah. Yeah. Last time I was there, I don't think City Cakes was a thing yet. Yeah, they're they're really good. <laughs> I just had City Cake Wait. cake last night. <laughs> the City Cake is is the one that Kelly does, right? Oh, uh, that's Cakewalk. And oh, she's, Cakewalk. She's not well, she's kind of doing it, but I think she runs oh, it out of okay. the restaurant now. Okay. All right, so I, I'm not even sure what, what City Cake is then. It's a vegan bakery. <laughs> we have two. Ah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I was asked a few weeks ago if I had any interest in filming the next Sea Shepherd campaign. Oh, awesome. Um, Filming for Whale Wars. I am. Um, really? Yeah, I. They asked me. I, it almost happened last year, but timing wise, it didn't work out. And I told myself that um, if I had the position offered to me this year, that I had to take it no matter what, pretty much. <laughs> and uh, they asked me if I had any interest in it. And I said, yeah, of course. Um, and a few days later, they, they bought me plane tickets. So it's. Um, Today is the 16th. Uh, so in three days, on the 19th, I leave and I fly out to start campaign. That's so cool. Pretty, pretty exciting. And I'm really yeah, happy for um, you. That's awesome. Yeah, Sea Shepherd is putting their their own video crew together now. Mm -hmm. um, a couple, or last year, Animal Planet pretty much came to them. And they're like, hey, we're not going to crew your boats this year, but if you guys find your own crew and film it, we will air it still. Um, Do you know yeah, why so Animal Planet did that? I'm not totally sure. Um, my guess is that the campaigns were getting pretty heavy, mm -hmm. um, and they didn't want to put their crew at risk anymore. Like... If you were if you were keeping keep up with that show at all, you saw that like the Japanese whalers rammed a, a smaller Sea Shepherd boat and pretty much sunk it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that that may have been a, a pretty a pretty big deciding factor that that this wasn't really for them anymore. <laughs> like, oh, I mean, fuck, this is real. <laughs> yeah, like like this is real life, and we have no control over this, like that sort of thing. Um, so that would be my guess, but. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so they filmed last campaign, and that um, Sea Shepherd that was their first time filming on their own, and that's being turned into like a two-hour special that's on Animal Planet. I think it airs on December fourteenth or sixteenth. Um, that's awesome. So yeah, so we, what we kind leave. of uh, training do you have to do to be uh, on the filming crew of uh, on something like that? Um, I'm sure most people that are crewing actually went to school for film, but I like went to school for film or film production. I did not. I'm self-taught. <clears throat> so everything, all my training and experience is just trial and error for the most part. 
like just I mean I, I've been doing this pretty steadily for the past you know five years now and I just I say I mean I think I have quite a bit of experience filming and you know the the nonprofit you know social justice related realm um yeah they asked to see my work and I sent them I have this um video website called burning hearts media that's what i do video videos under now and i sent them that website and she got back to me like an hour later and said yeah we just watched your videos we want you on campaign um yeah so even though i don't have much experience or like you know like school experience to speak of <laughs> they saw that i i I kind of knew my way around the camera and felt comfortable asking me to go on campaign. Um, yeah, Do so you think it'll be hard is... to separate the activism from the actual filming? Like myself, like like myself trying not to get like emotionally involved in it and just concentrate yeah. on yeah. the TV show? Yeah, that's something that I've been thinking of the, the past week. I mean, I'm sure I'll be able to. Um, you know, filming... This sort of thing is going to be unlike anything else I've ever filmed. You know, I filmed a lot of protests and whatnot where, sure, I would like to get involved in the protest, but I know that I'm making a video, so I I, I don't get involved. But, um, yeah, it should be interesting. I've, I've had should... a really hard time, like, even being a legal observer, not trying oh, yeah. to get involved. It's just like, I want to. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I just want to never... throw this at them really badly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never even spent the night on a boat before. Um, so now I'm going to be, you know, on a boat for, you know, three and a half, four months. Ginger. Um, so it, it's definitely going to be quite an experience. The, ginger, huh? Yeah, ginger is the best for motion sickness. Huh. Like, like straight up ginger Ch root or like. I don't know. Mythbusters said the ginger gum is good. <laughs> oh, okay. Huh. Yeah. I should I should Google that and see what what form ginger is best in to help with that. Yeah, yeah totally. My fr I just love ginger my always. Oh, me too. I I love it. My friend who filmed last campaign has given me a bunch of leftover prescription um, patches that like go behind your ear. Um, okay. And those those supposedly work really well, and I kind of want to take as much as I can get, like just because being seasick the whole time would be the worst thing ever. Oh yeah. I mean, Four I'm sure of... I'm sure you wouldn't be seasick the whole time. I, at at some point, your body has to get used to it, right? Or at least that's what I'm telling myself. That let's I, go with you know, yes. once. Yeah, like once I just reach a certain point, I'll be like, all right. I know, I know, I know what it feels like now. And let's hope that you don't get it at all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some people don't even get it. I I talked to some some sea shepherd named Tommy a couple of days ago, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm I'm one of the lucky ones. I never get sick on any campaign, but some people get really sick." Yeah, that's that's something that I've always been really interested in doing the sea shepherd campaigns and stuff like that. And I know that Mari was the same way. Uh -huh. That's how she ultimately found me. But I yeah. Don't know if I oh, really? Like seasickness. Yeah. Yeah. Sea Shepherd was following me on Twitter, and and she was trying to find a way to get involved with Sea Shepherd, and so she followed some people that they were following, and we started. Oh. <laughs> but where's she from again? She's from Colombia. Colombia. Okay, that, that's where I thought. Cool. And yeah. does she live in in the states now? Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. We we just got married a month ago. I I noticed. And you yeah. you went to Hawaii, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, you went to Hawaii shortly after I did. Oh really? Yeah, I went um I went sometime okay, maybe not shortly after. I went in, in August, I think. I, I but, enjoyed when were you there? quite a bit. Uh which island did you October. go to? October. Uh, okay. Um Oahu? Oh, cool! Yeah, yeah. Hawaii's awesome. I love it. It's so, so weird. So when being are you able to... leaving for? 
what was that? It's weird being able to jump in the water no matter what time it is and it, it being warm all the time. Oh yeah, that's the best part about it though. Just remember you won't be able to do that in the Arctic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at all. <laughs> yeah, I think like it, if you fall in the water in the Arctic, you get like fifteen minutes and then you're pretty much gone. And I've always heard it was like fifteen maybe. <laughs> Yeah, like 15 if you're wearing a dry suit, maybe. <laughs> wow. Do, do you know if they're going to be having you on, like, the Zodiacs, or if, do you not know yet? Um, I'm not totally sure. So I've been watching a lot of Whale Wars the past few days just to get myself <laughs> ready. And I noticed that the past couple of campaigns, campaigns it looks like the zodiacs just have gopro cameras on them okay so i'm not i'm not sure if they crew the zodiacs oh wait no actually they do yeah they, they actually told me that they do um so never mind um so i i'm sure i will yeah wow i just want to always be in the helicopter yeah that, that's what i was just gonna say i'm not sure which boat i'm gonna be on but i would love to be on the boat that has the helicopter, which I think the Steve Irwin has the helicopter. Yeah, that would and be heard... a rad experience. Yeah, that would. I heard that uh, Peter just got a captain, right? He just became captain? Uh, of, of, um... Of the Bob? I, I mean, I'm not sure which one. Yeah, but probably the Bob. I, I can't... Steve Irwin is pretty much Paul's ship. Mm -hmm. So if, yeah, if, if, is yeah, it, it's There's probably the Bob. Weird echo. It, oh, the echo's back. It's it's different this time. I'm I'm sorry. That's why I keep like cutting in and out. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Just give sorry. Give one second. I am here. All right, that's that's so much better. Sorry about that. No problem. But yeah, the um. Are they still is is Paul still doing stuff then? Yeah, um I know Sea Shepherd's been making a big deal the past couple of weeks about Paul being back in the States for the first time since he had to go underground in Europe. Mm -hmm. Um like last campaign, I think. Um yeah, I mean I think Paul's gonna be on the on the ship every campaign until he doesn't have to do this anymore. Like Yeah. You know, in, until until the Japanese government stops whaling. I'm really shocked that they still do it. Like, I'm honestly surprised by that fact. Yeah, it's pretty weird. Like, it's, they've tried to, like, trick Sea Shepherd the past couple of years, you know. They, like, made announcements saying that they've stopped whaling. And the um, one of the last campaigns, they actually, the government used a bunch of the tsunami release funds to go into, you know, the whaling industry, the Japanese whaling industry. Yeah, that was so absurd to me because I thought for sure, like, that they would put other priorities ahead. Of I can whaling. be wrong, but haven't they run in, in the negative for the last several years? Yeah, I mean, the, the quote has been at least cut in half the, the past two years since, since this has been a major Sea Shepherd campaign. Sea Shepherd's been doing an awesome job cutting the quota, that's for sure. Yeah, totally. And like it's, it, they should totally be commended, not just for you know standing up the Japanese, but the conditions that they're doing it in are just fucking absurd. Yeah, you know. So I, my hat goes off to all of them. Definitely. Yeah, I think um, the last campaign they ended up getting two hundred whales, um, give or take, but their quota was seven hundred, so they they got cut off way before they even reached the halfway point. Good. That's awesome. Fuck them. Yeah. I can't. Pretty... I can't wait till they just have zero and they're just like, fuck. Yeah. And... <laughs> I just want to. Get... I know that's what everyone wants, but. <laughs> and it's pretty interesting that they they use a whale sanctuary as their hunting grounds. I know. I... But I mean, it it's so it's so lawless down there. Like no one's policing it. You know, she shepherds there, and that's pretty much it. Well, pretty much, isn't Australia the one who's supposed to be policing it? Yeah, these it's Australian waters are the closest waters for the most part, I think. 
and that's and that's what's so odd is that like um that's why they're they're down there you know they're they're uh going under like what is a un treaty and something else do you do you, it, are you familiar i'm i'm not totally sure yeah i i just i think it's like they're they're acting under like a un treaty and so yeah, yeah that's how that they say that they're po- they're policing the yeah. waters that aren't policed well i look forward to seeing your work on the show i'm, I'm totally stoked for you yeah yeah it's gonna be pretty exciting to see you know my name on a credits of a tv show i'm pretty just bizarre. excited for you it's gonna be really fun yeah it, it still doesn't feel real though it's, yeah that's I don't think it's gonna feel real until I step on a boat. Yeah, I I can't I can't imagine it's it's this this yeah I can't I can't even imagine it. That's awesome. Yeah, I have I have quite a bit of shopping to do before then. I have like a list of items that I was told to bring, and you have to go from like warm Australia to freezing fucking cold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> pretty bizarre yeah it's it's summer in australia right now i think yeah yeah and so that they gave you a list of stuff to get yeah um what kind of stuff it's like the bizarrest thing on that list um let, let's see i could i could read the list as we're talking right now right. <laughs> um okay let's see Um, the most bizarre thing. Let's see. I think it'd be funny for like two pairs of underwear. Like, <laughs> yeah, or or no underwear at all. <laughs> Please do not bring underwear. <laughs> Please do not bring underwear. Um, yeah, I mean, none of it's that weird. Like, they, if if you like, if you have a special snack that you like, you know, like peanut butter or protein bars, they want you to bring that stuff. So you're asking what activism's like in Salt Lake? Yeah, it was funny. I asked you that question, and then it went silent, and then the <laughs> call hung up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "What the hell was that? Was that like you know bad security culture to ask?" <laughs> that? Like, and like all of a sudden, you know, the Witch Side podcast. You're like, oh, you know, fuck this dude. <laughs> <laughs> well. We are very close to the uh, NSA data center, so who oh, yeah? knows what the fuck they do. <laughs> Maybe that's why it's huh. getting buggy. <laughs> I'll let you take that one, Jordan. Well, um, I know that they're doing uh, a, lo- a Lagoon campaign again, and that's something that they've oh, yeah. been pushing a lot. Um, uh-huh. Other than that, um, one of the longest standing um, FERC for years, yeah, for your like first stores recently um, closed. Yeah, finally. Oh, and, wow. it, and we don't know why it closed. <laughs> we're just glad, but we're glad it closed because, yeah, um, of course, generations it feels uh, have tried to close that place, and they've always been in the negative. But I think she might have just eventually died. When I'm happy, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I cross my fingers for that. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there's some. Sometimes that's just what it takes, you know, like the owner, the owner dying and then their, their kids not wanting to take up the same sort of job. Yeah. She was so fucking cold. She couldn't breed. Well, and that's oh my God. Fine. <laughs> just uh, with, with um, we've had, we've all had very personal run-ins with her. So yeah, <laughs> extremely personal. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. But, um, yeah, I think uh, I think that there's also that um horse carriage um one of the horses collapsed and there was yeah. like a whole controversy around that cuz they said that it didn't die and it did. It oh, released, weird. They so, released fake but... photos saying, "See, look, it's fine." And, oh, whoa. Yeah. And then they got caught. Yeah. And they got caught. So Holy that's... shit. And they closed. They closed. Well, last I heard that they weren't going to come back. And then the city was looking at um, rezoning, mm-hmm. so it would l- take them only inside Liberty Park, which would not be enough. Well, we no, we were talking about no. This is what the city council was talking about. Oh, awesome! Because that's what we were trying to do. We we're trying to move them there just to make them like ineffective. Yeah, because there's not yeah. the economy there for it. No. Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah. So that's some of the stuff besides the Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The horse care stuff is always so frustrating. Oh yeah. Like I mean I guess it's not more frustrating than, you know, other sort of animal exploiting industries, but you know, going going to a city and seeing, you know, a, a couple take cute selfies in like the back of like a horse drawn carriage. It's oh, like, yeah. God damn. Like these people just are so clueless about about everything. My my daughter's taken to waving at the people, so they wave back and then she flips them off. <laughs> oh my god. That's awesome. How old is your daughter? Seven. That rules. <laughs> Because she knows she can't, you don't want to yell around the horses. Uh So she's just like, fuck them. (laughs) That's so funny. Yeah, it is. That's awesome. We we used to just walk along, since they go slow enough that you could just walk right next to them on the sidewalk. We would just tell the horse carriage driver how awful he was and just make the the couple's time miserable. Yeah. (laughs) Sometimes that's what it takes. It's it's just true. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, when I was in Toronto last week, I was really bummed out to see how much fur there was. Yeah. Like, so many people wearing fur. I mean, sure, it is a lot colder there than it is here in Portland, but it's so frustrating, like, not being able to do anything about all these, you know, rich, old white people wearing fur. And that's what's really interesting about being here. We don't see the actual fur very much. We just see the farms. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And so, like, we see the farms and everything, but it's, you know, I always have the view, well, there can't be that many people. I only see, like, two fur coats a year. Except for when you yeah. go to Pike Park City during Sundance. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, that's that's the our issue. We're dealing with the fucking farms, and we don't really yeah. see the people with the coats. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah. That's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, well, um... Do you know how close the closest farm is to Salt Lake? Um, which one? Like, which side of Salt Lake? I mean, they're in Salt Lake. Oh, the, there's farms inside, like city limits. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's shit. one right okay. next. Door. Um, <laughs> there is five I can think of within five miles from where we're sitting. Oh whoa! Yeah, um, that is you, gnarly. Yeah, Utah used to be the number one. We're um, two or three now. Yeah, I think we're number two now. Uh, we after still have Wisconsin. The, don't we still have the largest? Yeah, we have uh, Jordan, that, which is across the street from the NSA data center. Yeah. Oh wow! And that's the the biggest one in the world that we know of. Yeah. Like, and then right. there's um, yeah, it's, Morgan County is the number one for um, capita, yeah. and that has the most fur farms per capita. Of any place, and that's here too. So. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, the only fur farm that I know of that's close to Portland is thirty minutes outside town. Wow. And yeah, and so that's way different than your situation. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. It's it's just weird just driving by him because like you drive by him and you're like, there's fucking animals in there. It fucking sucks. Yeah. Yeah. And then you know how to calculate the size, and you calculate how many are in there, and you just want to cry. Yeah. There's this many barns, that means there's thousands of animals. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Well, cool. I'm glad this conversation went to a bum out now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, well, I was just thinking about how many uh, four-door barns the McLaughlin farm has, and it just fucking ridiculous uh, anyways <laughs> um yeah so you're leaving uh in a couple days then yeah i'm leaving on the, the 19th i um yeah I, i'm not supposed to i mean it, even though everyone knows i'm not supposed to discuss the locations i'm flying to yeah um yeah so i'm flying into one location hanging out for a few days and then flying somewhere else and then we start campaign. I mean, it, it's hard to say is we don't start campaign until the Japanese whalers leave. Yeah. Be, because, you know, we're not going to head into the ocean and just wait for them. We're not going to waste time. So mm-hmm. we, when they leave, we leave. So it's it's sort of hard to tell when um, 
sort of hard to tell when we will be leaving. So we, have... we just have to, we just have to be ready for it. Yeah, that's awesome. So they just have someone like watching the whalers to make sure they leave. Yeah, from what from what it sounds like, I, I think um, I think there is a couple of people in Japan that they let you know. Awesome. Yeah, so they're you know in in contact with Paul and yeah. Yeah, and we obviously <laughs> don't want to compromise details either, you know. So yeah, um, yeah, well, that's awesome. Well, um, I was going to say, it's been really awesome talking to you. Uh, how can people connect with you, like, online or social media? Yeah, so um, I still have the Because We Must site up. And while I'm gone, there's going to be a couple of people, you know, um, taking to the blog. I have I kind of didn't – I stopped having time for the blog a while ago, so I've only been posting videos that I've been working on. Mm-hmm. But um, I think people are going to start blogging again. Um, so because we must dot org, you can find us there, and also because we must on Facebook, because we must on Twitter, and I also have uh, my video page burningheartsmedia dot com, and I also have a Twitter and a Facebook for that as well. But um, yeah, as long as you find the actual websites, you could find all the social uh, social networking links on there as well. Awesome. Well, is there yeah. anything you would like to uh, to leave everyone with? Um, God damn, I wasn't ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, I'm I'm looking at a really cute squirrel outside my my window right now. It's getting all all fluffy for winter, so I guess I'll leave people with uh, the thought of a very cute squirrel getting all fluffy and warm for winter. Sweet best. <laughs> um, we end every episode saying "fuck shit, damn." Would you uh mind ending us that way? Yes. Um, is, is it just me saying it, or are we yeah, like, yeah. doing it like harmony? No, fuck no, no, it's, shit, it's all on damn. me. Fuck shit, damn. Fuck all the shit and all the dams. <laughs> <laughs> it always just feels good to say it. <laughs> fuck shit, damn. It does. <laughs> it's fun doing bad things. This week we heard Fantagram, When I'm Small, and RJD2, Ghost Rider. And as always, El Comandante, which side are you on? Which side are you on? I'm on the right side. Wow. That is such a lame old joke. Yeah, it is. It's way dumb. We should never do that again? No. Until next week. All right. We just don't know what else to say half the time. Nope, it's totally true. But we'd like to add a special thank you out to Mari the Booker. Uh, yeah. Things like this episode wouldn't happen without her. She's great. She is. And if you want to help us out, you don't have any cash, iTunes. Yeah. Rate, rate us and review us. Definitely. And if you do have some cash and you do want to help us out and you want some bonus content... You can always become a member of Which Side Podcast, and you'll get free bonus content every week. Lately, we've been given a few episodes, even. Yeah, because um, we've been testing out uh, some new podcasts. New, new podcasts we're, we're doing, and you'll get to be the test audience for that and let us know how to improve and make changes and get the best shit out there. Yeah. Fuck. Shit damn. Fuck. Shit damn. Fuck shit damn. Fuck shit fuck shit fuck shit fuck shit damn. damn. <laughs> Which side is produced by the Witch Side Media Collective?